Hey everybody, Steve Jackson from Imprintables Warehouse here. And today I'm gonna to show you a neat little project, this iPhone cover that I've made here. And it was inspired by a good friend of mine up at Stalls Canada, went to visit them recently. And they had a couple iPhones that they had stuff on the back of it there. And I took a look at how they made it and they were nice enough to send me a template that I'm gonna share with you folks too. But you can create with using this template and you can see different printouts here whatever you wanted on there, and then you could apply it to the back of the iPhone. Now on this one, I use Ceramark, which is a wall graphic material that has a removable adhesive, and to keep the edges from coming up on this and everything, I just bought this little cover from Verizon. It's got a nice rubber edge around it, and it's got the clear back and the opening for the camera and everything, so that I can put this around it, and it's gonna protect everything on there so that the print doesn't come off. Now, if I wanted a more permanent application on here that was durable and scratch resistant, because this would get scratched up right here without any protection on it, I could have laminated this and that would allow me to be able to remove it and put a different one on and have more uh, variety with it there. Or I could also use a more durable, long-lasting product that's more permanent, say like Arlon 6000 XRP, which is a cast wrap material, and I would print and laminate that and then put it onto the phone. So all we've got here, let me take this one off so you guys can see it. That's that removable wall graphic material and it just peels right off and I can squeeze it right back on with my finger. And we've got all our different ones here that I printed out in the line and I could just take a new one of these. Say if I did a bunch of designs, I'm doing a, a school or something like that. I'll just pull that apart there. And now I've got a, a new one right here. I've got the holes already cut out from the template and everything as you can see and I would be able to apply that one on there and it's simply just lining it up. I'll take this guy off and put it to the side and then lining it up around the holes and down the side and I even used my fingers to squeegee it on there as you can see. And even if it's off a little bit right there, no big deal with this one because we put this cover on and snap it right on and it covers down in the edge there and you can see it's nice on there and nobody can tell that it's a little bit off on there. So you could put anything you want onto these guys. You could customize it for say a school, sports team, local sports team or something like that. Very neat little project, very easy to do. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go into the graphics in Corel and I'm gonna show you folks how to set one up. And we'll also have a file for you to download if you want the template for this on my website, my blog, thegarmentedge.com. So let's go into Corel and take a look at how to set this up. Okay, here we have the design in Corel Draw, and on the left hand side you can see the template that we have created for the iPhone case. And then I've got this graphic over here with a, a fade going across it, and then the imprintables warehouse and a phone number. You could put anything you want in there. I could take this uh, item here and maybe give it a fill color if I wanted to and then put different items in there and arrange it however I want. Or say in the instance of a mascot for the local high school or sports team, I could put that in there in a repeating pattern or even photographs or whatever you want in there. So I'm going to hit Control Z. But for this design, the one that I showed you in the previous uh, portion of this video, we had the imprintables warehouse and then the phone number down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do with this is right click on it and in Corel 6 I can just pick the power clip inside in Corel 5 I would take this and then do effects and power clip in place inside frame uh, so but we'll right click here and power clip inside and then I choose the frame this this item right here and you can see we'll move this into the center and zoom in a little bit it's power clipped right inside of it and I've got the imprintables warehouse and everything and everything lined up just the way I want. I could edit this to move it around. I could add more elements in there and everything. But I've got my cut line all the way around there. And I could even maybe duplicate that around there if I was afraid of my cut line being off or give it a bleed zone. A number of different things that we could do. If I was worried about a bleed zone on this, let's uh, back this up a little bit. And we'll take this here and I'm going to break it apart because right now those two portions there are connected to it and I'll take this line here and I'm gonna contour it out. So I've got my contour docker open here and we'll go to the outside and we'll contour it out maybe, uh, I don't know, 0 0.05 inches. Let's see how that works and we'll round out those corners and hit apply just a little bit outside of it. That's perfect right where it is. 
and then I need to break these contours apart because it's connected to the rest of it. So the shortcut key for that is Control K, or I can come to Arrange and break contour group apart. Now this time what I'll do is I'll take that power clip here and I'll right click on it, power clip inside, and I'll pick the, the outer box there. So what happened this time now is I've got the power clip to outside of it. Uh, I've got my cut lines just on the inside of it there and I don't need that black line around it so I'll get rid of that and remove my outline. But you can see I've got a bleed zone all the way around it and it filled that hole. It looks like uh, I need to shift that guy down a little bit. I hit, uh, well let me back that up. I hit shift and page down or I could go arrange and order uh, to back of the page or back of layer right there. So what that did is it made this other cut line appear so I could see it there. It was still there, I just couldn't quite see it there. So that's the basics of how to get this set up and I would export it as normal as either a PDF X3 format or an EPS format to bring over to VersaWorks and then we would print and cut it on our desired material and we'd be able to put that right onto the iPhone. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check the link in the description below uh, for the outline for the, the template for this iPhone 4 and I uh, hope to see you at the next video. Thanks for stopping by.